A dozen years or so ago, I spent a wonderful summer uh, in the UK <clears throat> at um, Maidenhead as a guest of a former student, someone I taught years ago in California. Uh, she had married an Englishman who died and left her some property right on the River Thames. So it was delightful. I, I lived uh, in a little apartment above her boathouse. My wife and I uh, rented a car, hired a car, as they say there, and spent a terrifying two days driving on the wrong side of the road. But we couldn't get to Glastonbury uh, as we wanted to, or Tintagel in any other way, at least that I knew about. <clears throat> so we visited the Stones and then drove uh, for another hour or so to Glastonbury, where in the 12th century monks said they had discovered the graves of, of uh, Arthur and Guinevere. During the day, wandering around the ruins, uh, I encountered a, an Anglican priest who was posted out there. There's actually a small chapel. And we had a chance to talk. He said, why do you think the story of Camelot has persisted for so long and in a variety of, of ways, a variety of stories? And I said, well, clearly, He's a messianic figure. It seems to have something to do with that. It's a figure of hope and restoration. He said, try this. There had been a capital crime. Guinevere and her lover uh, from France, Lancelot du Lac, uh, were actually guilty as charged of, of adultery. And it wasn't merely adultery. When you are unfaithful to the king, you've also committed a crime against the state. The evidence was in, the accused was guilty, but the king and the judge didn't want the execution, so he found another way. I said, that was worth the price of my plane ticket, thank you. So as we look at this version of Camelot, some of the, um, some of the themes are still very much visible. The desire for something better, the commitment of life and energy and even safety to restoring order and peace in a disordered kingdom. And that is all threatened by infidelity from within. It's not the way it's supposed to be. It's the kind of world we live in. We're sinners. But the king did not want the execution to proceed and he found a way to make sure that love and forgiveness prevailed over mere justice, justice alone, which can be pretty daunting. The Pharisees were good about justice. Jesus acknowledged that, but he said, you've forgotten that the law also is about mercy and justice. So in many ways, this is a story about grace. We <clears throat> look to Arthur, who was wronged, but who himself was a sinner and who extended the grace that he needed to his wife and to his best friend who had profoundly wronged him. But there were more important things than that. So even after the last battle, when Arthur is done in by his own illegitimate son, the idea of Camelot continues uh, in film, in text, and in musical. And I'll be there to watch this and celebrate once again uh, the great virtues and hopes that we see in this wonderful musical.